Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level further maths. Here we're looking at inverse functions and how we can use matrices to represent inverse functions. It's not surprising that we're going to use the inverse matrix. So let's see something in action here. We've got triangle T uh, with vertices A, B and C. Uh, we've got a matrix A and we're told that a transformation T, uh, it, this matrix transforms T with these uh, coordinates uh, to the triangle T with these coordinates. So this is the image coordinates. These are where the coordinates have ended up after their transformation. And we need to work out the original set of coordinates that they came from. So part A is find the original coordinates A, B and C. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this capital X to represent a matrix of coordinates. So it might it might look something like x equals a1, a2, b1, b2, c1, c2. Um, so a1, a2 represents in the coordinate a, b1, b2 represents in the coordinate b, c1, c2 represents in the coordinate c. And we want to find out where these coordinates have ended up after this transformation to these set of coordinates here. So we'll use the x instead of all of this big uh, piece of algebra there, um, and we want to work out what x is now. We so effectively we need to get rid of the letter m. Now, if we think about m, uh, we can't really divide by m. You can't really divide by matrices on both sides. But what you can do is you can pre-multiply by m minus one. So you see here we've multiplied by m minus one at the front of both the left and the right-hand expressions. Therefore, that's why I call it pre-multiply because it's at the start. If it was at the end, it'd be post-multiply, and we'll see a question like that later. So why have we pre-multiplied by inverse m? Well, that's because inverse m and m are next to each other. And when they're next to each other, they simplify to make i, uh, or 1, effectively. So we cancel out the m minus 1 and the m. And we've got our set of coordinates. x equals the inverse of our matrix times by the coordinate set of matrix, the coordinate matrix here. So what we need to do now is work out the inverse of m. Now, just a reminder here, the way we do that is we first find the determinant, so multiplying the leading diagonal and subtracting the other diagonal to get 7. And then remember which ones we need to swap and negate. It's swapping the leading diagonals, so 1 and 4, and then it is negating the other two letters, 1 and minus 3. So that's our inverse transformation there. So all that's left for us to do now is just times this inverse matrix by the image coordinates to get our original coordinates. So timesing the two together, remember we go along the first matrix and down the second matrix. The, um, the matrix dimensions uh, add up. Uh, leave the one seventh at the front here. So one add one times four add one times three is seven. And continuing this all the way along, going on to the bottom row on the first matrix to get the bottom row of y coordinates. And this simplifies nicely to one over seven brackets. And in the matrix is going to be seven zero the first coordinate, fourteen twenty eight the second coordinate, minus seven zero the third coordinate. Now, just spotting here, all of these numbers inside the matrix are divisible by 7. So let's go ahead and include the 7th inside this matrix here. So these are the real uh, set of uh, uh, original coordinates. 1, 0, 2, 4, and minus 1, 0. Okay. So that's how we do that then. So let's have a look at a second question here where we're going to use a similar idea. Uh, the matrix A is 2, 4, minus 2, minus 5, represents transformation T, given that T maps the point P with coordinates X, Y onto the point 6, 10. Find the original set of coordinates, or the original coordinates. So what we have here is matrix A, which was 2, 4, minus 2, minus 5, has times by a coordinate P, we call this, because it's been given a letter P in the question, uh, to the coordinate 6, 10. So the way that we're going to work out the coordinate X, Y is by pre-multiplying by inverse A matrix. 
So you can use your calculator for these types of questions as well here and you'll get 2.5, 2, minus 1 and minus 1 for the inverse matrix. So then pre-multiply that by the coordinates and you get 35 minus 16. So the coordinate 35 minus 16 under this matrix here will transform to 6, 10. Okay, the second question here is the matrix B represents transformation U given the transformation T followed by transformation U is equivalent to a reflection in the line Y equals X. Find matrix B. Okay, well so far we know the matrix representing A uh, or representing the transformation U. We we don't know the transformation U, sorry, we know the transformation T, so we need to work out um, that. Uh, and uh, we could probably work out the, the matrix that represents a reflection in Y equals X, so we'll probably do that first. Working out the matrix that represents a reflection in the line Y equals X, so it's this line here, do the old flipperoo, and then the red coordinate goes in first, blue coordinate goes in second and this new set of coordinates here is the same as our transformation matrix over the line y equals x. So now we know two of the matrices and we need to work out the third so we can use inverse matrices for that. What we know so far is that uh, we've got matrix A, we've, got, we've not got matrix B, uh, why have we multiplied it in this order? Well remember that when we're, when we're applying matrix transformations, we have to multiply the matrices in the reverse order. So that's why it's looking like a B, then an A. And we know that when we perform the t one matrix followed by the other, it's the same as a reflection in the line Y equals X. So that's why the matrix for Y equals X is on the other side. Now we're looking to work out B, and we know A, so the only way we're going to get rid of a is by post multiplying on both sides by the inverse A matrix so that these then cancel out on the left hand side uh, to leave just B on its own and we can work out the right hand side afterwards. So just a reminder the inverse for the matrix A was 2.52 minus 1 minus 1 so let's times out these matrices together whoops and we get minus 1, minus 1, 2.5, 2. Okay, so that there is the matrix that we apply after the matrix A, and when we do it in that order, we get the same as a reflection in the Y equals X line. Brilliant then, so inverse transformations, the way we apply an inverse transformation is with an inverse matrix. Your turn to have a go at this question here then, pause the video and try this one out. Alright then, so the matrix A, 1, 2, minus 3, minus 2 represents the transformation T, given that T maps point P with coordinates X, Y onto the point P prime with coordinates 5, 8. So this is our image coordinate and we need to work out the original coordinates. So in this question here, we've got um, matrix A times by x, y is equal to 5, 8. 5, 8 is the image, we need to work out the original set of coordinates. So in this case here, x, y is going to equal the inverse of this matrix times by 5, 8. Now what is the inverse of this matrix here? Well, we can swap over the minus 2 and the 1, negate the 2, negate the minus 3, so it's now plus 3, and the determinant of this matrix would be minus 2, minus minus 6, so that's going to be 4, so that's going to be a quarter. So let's times out these two matrices here, so we're going to get minus 2 times 5, that's minus 10, um, take away... 16, so that's going to be m m minus uh, 26. And then plus 3 times 5 is 15, add 8, and that's going to give you 15, add 8 is uh, 23. 
Okay, so this is going to give you minus 26 over 4 and 23, whoops, 23 over 4. Okay. Right, so the next question here is the matrix B represents transformation U. Given that the transformation T followed by the transformation U is equivalent to a reflection in the line Y equals minus X, find B. Okay, so the first thing we need to do here is work out what this reflection in the X axis is going to be here. Now it's going to be a reflection along this line here, that's the y equals minus x line. This is our original first coordinate and it's going to end up down here. And this was our original first coordinate. Uh, remember we always use z 1, 0 and 0, 1 to work out um, the matrix for a given transformation. So it's going to be 0, so minus 1, 0. So it looks like the matrix um, that represents y equals minus x here is going to be the first coordinate moved down here, so that was 0, minus 1, and the second coordinate moved down there, so that was minus 1, 0. So now what's happened is we have got uh, matrix A, which is 1, 2, minus 3, minus 2, times by B... Oh, where does B go? B does B go at the front or does B go at the end? So it's matrix T followed, sorry, transformation T followed by transformation U. So B is going to go at the front. And the reason for that is that we want to do this transformation matrix first and this transformation matrix second. And once we've done both of those, it's the same as a reflection in the line of Y equals minus X, and we know what that is. So the next thing for us to do is just now post multiply by the inverse matrix on A. Now, what's going to happen on the right-hand side here is I need this matrix on the left and this inverse matrix on the right. Reason being is that I'm going to times by the inverse matrix on the right on the left-hand side, so I need to do the same on the right-hand side. So in this case here, minus 2, minus 1, and it's going to be minus 2, 3, and I remember rightly that the determinant here was a quarter. So we'll put a quarter at the front there, so a quarter here. Times out the values and we're going to get minus 3. Um, we're going to get uh, 1. Uh, we're going to get 2, 2. And we're going to get 2, 2. Okay, so that's uh, that's the answer there. That's the matrix B. We could also incorporate the quarters. So it would be minus three quarters, one quarter, two quarters or a half, and two quarters again or a half again. So that's our answer there. So this is the matrix uh, B that we were asked to find. All right then. Thanks very much for your uh, for you watching this video. Um, make sure you have lots of practice on exercise seven F. And then make sure you have a go at the mixed exercise as well. It's always a good idea to practice all of these different techniques we've used in this series of video in the mixed exercise so that you know what technique you need to use and when you need to use it and get practice at doing that. Right, thanks very much for watching.